Okay, so this is our next, um, we were trying to theme it a little bit too. And so this is a little bit of, of folks who are like a couple people who are down my hallway too in student involvement, but some uh, student life folks and student resources, um, Aramark too. So um, we're gonna do, uh, go through very similarly, um, go down uh, go down the path. Mr. Cirillo was graciously offered to stay as well too. So especially like afterwards, if there's any financial aid questions too that are still lingering, feel free. Um, I'm also gonna speak um, to student involvement as well and the new student orientation program. You, so, but I'm going to start with my colleague Holly. Hi, everyone. Nice and speaking to, to that because oh, people are up there. Can you hear me? Okay. Hi, welcome. Nice to see you. My name is Holly Young. I'm the Senior Associate Director of Career Services. So, I'm going to answer any questions you might have about internships, part time jobs, full time jobs, and how we can help your students reach their goals and get everything they want out of their experience here at Porto. My name is Mona Kabani. I'm the marketing assistant for Ram Dining. Um, anything about meal plan questions, dining locations, the program in general, I'm a great resource to ask for that. Also, if I wasn't able to catch you at the table today during the lunch session, I have campus maps with some information on them if anyone's interested to grab a copy for your student. Hi, everyone. My name is Julie Weber. I'm the executive director for the Office of Multi Care. My primary role is to make sure that your child Um, we have a wide variety of programming that is going to get a little bit more stuff in this town. Um, but we offer training and workshops, our network series, which includes our LGBTQ allies and support, innovation solidarity network. And then we also have a wide variety of cultural programming that includes a lot of young folks. So if you have any questions about that, I'd be happy to answer. Okay, I'll give the Great. <laughs> you can pass that one down. Is that one is not on? How about this one? Is that is that working? Okay. Um, hi everybody. My name is Melanie Russell. I am the associate director for disability services. Um, we offer services for students with all types of disabilities, um, psychological, medical, physical, um, you know, LD and uh, ADHD. Um, whether your student has received services in the past or has not, um, they should definitely come um, and set up an intake with us. The first step would be for them to apply, um, fill out our application on our website. The fastest way to find our website is to Google Fordham Disability Services, the first link that pops up. Fill out the application and then have them call our office and we'll set up an intake appointment. Um, if they have documentation in advance, that's really helpful. Um, if not, you know, we will try and work with them while they're in the process of getting the documentation. Um, but definitely, uh, it's never too late to register. Uh, so whether it's first year, sophomore, junior, senior, we will provide accommodations for students that need them. You guys already know me. I think. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, Student Financial Services, um, Jim Cirillo, I'm the Campus Director of Student Financial Services at Lincoln Center. Um, so again, any financial services related questions, and uh, if you have something more personal, I'm going to be here after the session to take questions as well. Great, thanks. Um, and then again, I'm Dan Patterson. I'm, I'm the Associate Director for First Year Experience. I work in the Office for Student Involvement. I've been at Fordham um, for a while maybe about 12 years um, too, but I oversee the new student orientation program. Um, and then I work in student involvement. Student involvement oversees uh, the over 50 clubs and organizations that we have um, here for the Lincoln Center campus. We also oversee um, the commuter student services uh, programs as well. We have the commuter first year mentor program um, and uh, commuting students association, both of which I oversee too. Um, alcohol and other drug education also comes out of our office. My colleague, Melissa, um, you've heard from her and she's also heavily involved in all of our programming, um, student government, um, big campus programs as well too. So, um, and towards the end, then I'll talk a little bit about the, uh, orient the orientation programs, give you all some dates, give you a little bit of an overview um, about that too. But I wanna be conscious of time and, and get to whatever questions that you might have for uh, the group, this new group of us that we've got here. Anyone? I'll hold it. Hello, we have a question in the chat referring to uh, when students are going to find out who either their CFM, uh, that is commuter freshman or first year mentors, or RFM, resident first year mentors are. Cool. 
So I'm going to tag team this with Dean Campbell, if that's okay. Um, student uh, commuter first year students will find out who their CFM is in, I would say, within the next two weeks. Um, we're working on the list currently um, right now. And just to give a, a little bit bigger explanation about it, the CFM program, uh, again, comes out of student involvement. Um, and then we pair or we match uh, the commuting students in, in smaller groups, small-ish um, groups of mentor groups, peer mentors. We hire uh, students to work with, uh, work with them to really serve as an upper class student, a mentor, um, to help them navigate their, their first year at Fordham. We know that the commuting student experience is, is very specific and unique, um, and there are unique challenges to that that are certainly different than the residential um, experience. And so we have uh, 10 students um, this year who will be um, matched up with your commuter students, and there will be open office hours where students can come and just like, hey, this is what I'm thinking about, or hey, I'm registering for classes, or what club should I get involved, or I'm really having a hard time managing my commute, what should I do, or do you know of anybody else, you know, commuting from bed -Stuy? Um, you know, and then, and those are some really great opportunities. There's also some programmatic elements to that, um, too, so we'll do small groups, you know, small group program where it'll only be, you know, if Alden is my CFM, you know, she'll say, you know, hey, everybody, we're going to the park and we're going to go get Magnolia cupcakes. And so we'll do that. And then there's bigger ones that we have with the, with the, that are open to the entire uh, first year class um, of that. One of the other pieces that we do is we col uh, collaborate closely with the Office of Residential Life um, too, and make sure that you know these two communities aren't separate and aren't aren't um, operating in silos um, too, because we know that it's it's really easy. It's like okay, I've got this 8:30 commute, and I need to do this, this, and this, and then go home. And the residents might be like, hey, I think I'm going to go have lunch back in my room. Um, and so we want to make sure that they're able to build those those relationships too. And so we worked with the RA and the RFM staff to do some programming throughout the year. Um, but I do want to refer to Dean Campbell to talk maybe about when, um, when they'll know about. So that information is going to go out the first and second week of August. So you'll start to see that roll out uh, in terms of the assignments and also in terms of the moving dates and timelines, uh, the first and second week of August. Thank you. Good. Questions? Yes. Can you, so I heard, I heard most of that. So can, can parents request a meeting with staff about? Got it. Sure. Yeah, yeah, no, no, of course, of course. Um, so I would encourage you, I would encourage your student to have that conversation with their, uh, with their academic advisor, you know, about what that really looks like. Um, I'd also like to ask Dean Campbell to talk a little bit about FERPA and how FERPA plays into this. Sure. So there's this uh, federal law. When I mentioned it earlier, relative to negotiating with your student about getting their academic record and things of that nature, that they'll need to release that to you in order for you to have access to that. It's kind of the same deal in terms of having those conversations with the academic dean in that they should arrange with the dean to have a meeting in conjunction with you uh, relative to their comfort level in terms of doing that. And that's the discussion that you need to have with your student and then they can follow up with their academic uh, advisor or the dean of their college to uh, have a conversation about where they are academically. But uh, we're not allowed to release certain information to you. We can release um, student conduct as part of, of what we do, but as it relates to your grade, your students' grades, they would need to give you access to that information. They're not, the uh, academic deans are not able to have that conversation with you short of your, your students saying that they want you to be engaged in that conversation. You know, so part of this all, you know, with orientation, I think when we're working with residential life and, and we're working across the, you know, is really is really sort of have those conversations with your students about about open communication, what that really means and what works best for you and your family, you know, about that, because certainly we want to make sure that we're supporting, you know, everyone involved while also making sure that we, um, you know, are following what's expected of us, you know, sort of from the law um, at the university too. So yeah, Jim. That, that's actually the same thing from a financial perspective, because Right now, we are only, we're sending out electronic bills to your son or daughter, and that's going to come to their Fordham email address. However, when they log into their, to the e-bill suite, they can add a parent or a relative or someone else to have access.
access to their billing statements and to get notifications. So I definitely encourage all of you to, uh, to have the student log in and set that up since you know, we know that the parents are primarily the ones who are gonna be handling the bills for these students. Well, there's anything, okay, good. Question, yes. So basically, that's an ongoing basis. It's going to be contingent upon base vacancies and attrition. So it could be tomorrow. It could be in the spring. There's more of an opportunity for those individuals who were not admitted with housing in terms of the application pool to get housing in the spring because we'll have a number of students that are going on study abroad students that are graduating, students that are ending their tenure here at the university. So there's more fluidity in terms of us being able to make those accommodations in the spring. But I tell parents, you may want to wait a little bit if you know that your student is high up on the list because initially during those first couple of weeks of school, we do have students who come and it's just not for them, for whatever reason, and they'll end up uh, withdrawing from the university at that point, taking a medical leave of absence or leave of absence in general. So if you know that you're at the upper end of the queue, you may want to wait just a little bit because you may get a space on campus. Addition, in addition to that, if you live within a commutable distance, New York, New Jersey, you're from Montclair, for example, that's a commutable distance. Wait it out a little bit before you invest space, for instance, in an apartment or something of that nature, because you may get a space. Um, okay, so I'm going to go to our, our panelists, maybe, Mona, do you want to talk a little bit more about kind of what's in the map, but also if, if I'm coming to school and I have um, some specific dietary needs, how do you negotiate that? Cool, so what's in this map, um, first of all, has a link to our campus dining website, it's fordham.campusdish.com. You can find out essentially all of your meal plan dining information through there. We have an FAQ section, a meal plan 101 section that breaks down the meal plan of itself. Um, also in this map is a campus map of the school itself, as well as where the locations are on this campus that students can dine at with some information about them. Um, this way, you know, if you have a student that's coming to this campus with fresh eyes, they truly, they hopefully don't get lost. Um, we have a map to guide them. Um, and then in terms of dietary restriction for any parent that is worried about their students, uh, if they're a picky eater, vegan, vegetarian, gluten-free, et cetera, we do have a registered dietitian on this campus. Her name is Melanie Simeon. Um, she can answer any needs for um, any dietary restrictions. Her contact information is on this Fordham campus dish page. Um, it's under the contact us page. It's also simeon-melanie at aramark.com or ramhealth at fordham.edu. But you can reach out to her. She'll do any one-on-one -on -one consultations with your student, go through the different locations and what we have available and all of that good stuff. So yeah. We're actually opening up um, in our Schmelzer dining hall, a halal um, specific ingredient, not just halal meats, but also ingredients location. It's one station in that place, but it'll be all halal certified, yes. Yes. Yeah, we do have microwaves. Um, students are able, though, to sit at um, at least the some of our retail locations. The dining areas are Fordham owned, so they're allowed to sit at those locations itself. But like the all you care to eat dining location, they'd have to swipe in in order to access that space. But otherwise, they can bring their own food into the other dining halls. Yes. And there's microwaves in a couple different locations, like yeah. in Ram Cafe um, over in the Lowenstein building. And then there's a lounge right below this space right here that also has uh, a microwave as well. And I'm not sure if there might be one in Schmelzer as well in the law Schmelzer, school. Schmelzer does have one too. Yeah. Two. So there's three microwave locations and students are allowed to bring their food into those locations to, to eat their own food. Yeah. Great question. Yeah. Uh, maybe Holly, if you want to talk a little bit about internships and all that fun stuff. <laughs> all that good stuff. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so I like to say if your student finds a paid internship, they can intern right now. They can intern in high school. There's no restriction. 
if it's an unpaid internship, which will really be site specific, um, that employer does need to compensate your student. They can't just work for free, right? But I've seen a lot of different options. Stipends, they give your, kid, your student a Metro card, they say it's a travel stipend, right? They try to find creative ways to compensate your student. Oftentimes they will say they want your student to do it for academic credit. Um, in order to be eligible for academic credit, that typically looks like sophomore year for Gabelli students and junior year for the colleges. So, you know, I still want your students to come see us as freshmen. The earlier, the better. We can help them map it out, find leadership opportunities on campus. We work really closely with the Office of Student Involvement, all the amazing different clubs, LMA. There's a, a multitude of student leadership opportunities. Your student can still work on their resume. They can still gain great experience. We can help them package their part-time work, whatever they're doing already on the side, so that when they are ready to apply for internships, paid or unpaid, they'll feel ready. And one of the things I want to hop on, on board with, with Holly that I've started talking with some of my students about is, you know, encourage them to come talk to Holly and, and their office about what the what their involvements that they're interested in, and then how and what experience they're getting out of those um, out of those opportunities, right? Like with club um, organizations, we hire um, orientation coordinators. Alden was one um, with us last year. And I have those conversations with our students just saying, hey, don't forget that this isn't just a job on campus. You're learning some valuable experience from this, you know, right? And, and, and then I start talking with them just a little bit about that. And so, you know, maybe think outside the box, you know, and challenge your students to really think about, about that. Because I think when I think internship, I'm like, okay, cool, I want to go to J.P. Morgan or I want to work at, at, at the Metropolitan Opera of, of internship specific, and I have to sacrifice this one thing that I really want to do that's also a job on campus, you know, and, and encourage them to talk with career services to say, you know, what is your really your end goal? Because you might be able to, you know, sort of work it into that internship. And, and for class credit, I leave it up to Holly um, to advise on all of that stuff. But that's just one of those things to, you know, to just keep in mind as well. Yeah, you know, one thing I think that's really special about career services at Fordham is that we really do care about pure personnels and the whole person. And to Dan's point, we really help students kind of, you know, relay who they are, what they're looking for, their interests, their hobbies. It's all part of the package, you know? And we say we really care about occupational wellness. And what we mean by that is we want your student to find something they love, you know? We all know that work is life. So we wanna make sure they enjoy what they do, you know, and it's not just about finding a job, but it's about finding work that feels meaningful. So, you know, we have those conversations with your students to say, okay, what are you studying? What are you hoping for? What have you done? Um, and then how do you leverage all these amazing side projects, you know, in an interview? Your, your employer will ask you about that interest section. They're gonna ask you about the marathon that you just ran, you know, in addition to what you're studying and what your goals are. So. You know, it's kind of fun to have that conversation with students because they don't realize that employers do care about who you are as a whole person oftentimes. So it's kind of just rethinking that approach to work. Mm -hmm. Yes. Hi, I wonder if you do this in internships online and also for the in the freshman and the sophomore year. So how early do you give them because they are So the question is, the question is, uh, how are these internships published and then maybe how early are they accessible? Yeah, great question. So Handshake is our platform, our one-stop shop for all things career related. So um, please tell your student about Handshake. That's our online portal. And every student has an account already. They, if, so they're already ready to go. They just need their Fordham ID to, to log in and claim their account. In that account, you could set up a, a, a career counseling appointment with any of our career advisors. We are doing everything remote right now to be as accessible as possible. Um, so you could you know, schedule an appointment with a counselor. You can see our job portal, which has jobs and internships. There are over 10,000 opportunities in there right now, oftentimes remote right now for the time being, but we are starting to see the shift. Um, all our event calendar is in there. So all of our info sessions, we did everything virtually this past year. It was actually quite incredible. We were able, the silver lining was, we were able to reach so many more students than ever. We had virtual career fairs that were highly successful. Students actually felt, I don't know if any of you have seen career fairs, the line that could be like down the hall to see an employer. It could take an hour to see the person you wanna see. In the virtual space, students were able to book a 50 minute kind of session with an employer and really get face time. So the feedback we got from the employer end of things is that they really felt they got to know our students and our students felt like they actually, <laughs> that they were actually able to. 
they were actually able to make those really solid connections. So we have an event calendar and handshake that says all of the different happenings that all of our different Zoom events, Q and A's, alumni engagements, things like that. Um, what else is in handshake? Our resource guide. I mean, everything's in there. And the question about um, when should students apply, it's all in there. So there's a multitude of opportunities across every industry and it is kind of industry specific, but it's never too early to kind of log in and kind of get a lay of the land. If your student's interested in finance, it might look different than fashion, for example, but they can kind of get a sense of what the trends are. Yes, handshake. So if you actually just Google Fordham Career Services, you'll see on the left hand side handshake with these like really uncomfortable yellow looking hands and that's it <laughs> we actually have one in our office it's like a big hand that you could sit in and when you're a student you took it <laughs> and we kind of said okay we're not looking but please bring it back and then it was there the next day Lee, well, maybe can you talk very briefly about um sort of the the cultural committees and the opportunities that you um that you offer out of your office so I'm just going to give an overview of how our academic year is um, broken up. So we start the year off um, in September with Latinx Heritage Month, and that, that month runs from September 15th through October 15th. And then on October 1st, so this, these are the only two months that kind of overlap. Um, on October 1st, we kick things off with LGBTQ History Month. Then in November, it's Native and Indigenous Peoples Month. Um, and then in December, there's no real, Cultural Heritage Month that we celebrate. Instead, we're celebrating the interfaith season. So we'll celebrate Hanukkah, Kwanzaa, Christmas, et cetera. Um, then we go on break. And then when for the spring semester, we kick things off with Martin Luther King Week. February is Black History Month. March is Women's History Month. And we end the year with Asian American Pacific Islander Month, which typically takes place in May, but because we have a larger um, Asian identified population on campus, um, we celebrate that month in April because in May it's commencement season and the students are no longer here. So um, another important piece of this to mention is that this is a leadership opportunity for students to get involved um, with our office. It's a great opportunity for incoming students and freshmen um, to get involved with our office as well because they'll meet new students um, and they'll be able to see if they like planning events and again how to get involved on campus would be it, it's a great opportunity to get involved with us and then you'll again meet more students as well um, through the leadership opportunity we have students who are called our cultural programming coordinators so there are two students that are designed and they happen on, they occur on both campuses as well. So one student at Lincoln Center, one student at Rose Hill, and they're working together to plan the cultural events um, across both campuses. And they're working with our graduate intern to again, plan the, the events across both campuses for each month. Um, one of the things that we're working with each of the committees to do is to not just have, you know, not just plan events for your month and say, okay, you know, I was part of the Latinx committee, um, September's over, so now I don't have to do anything. We still want students to continue their programming beyond their month as well, whether it's, it's virtual programming, whether it's passive programming. Um, so again, it's a great leadership opportunity for students um, to get involved with our office and just to, to get to lay, to know the lay of the land as well. Um, and we've been implementing this for the past two years. So we're going on our third year with this now. Um, and it's been very receptive to students um, as well. So we're excited to see what they have planned and shameless plug, but if you follow at Fordham OMA, you could see a little bit more what our office does. And then from there, you'll see the cultural committee handles also on Instagram. And each of those handles are taking over the Instagram accounts um, each week leading up to orientation. So right now, currently, the Women's History Month group is taking over the Instagram, and they're, each week they're just showing you a little bit about what they have planned for the academic year, some general content, um, and they're also inviting freshmen and first-year students to get involved with their committee as well. So if you know that your student might be interested in this, please have them, again, follow at Fordham OMA, and then from there, if they're scrolling, um, they'll figure out what to do from there. Well, I'm just going to ask you a quick question. If there's one very quick thing that you wish students knew about your office, what would that be? Wow, that's a very good question. Um, it's not, I don't know that it's, I wish they knew, I wish they paid attention <laughs> because we always stress during the intake, if you are struggling at all, you have even just an inkling 
if something's not right or you need more support, reach out to us immediately um, because it just crushes me how often we don't hear from a student until the end of the semester and they failed a course or they had a really bad experience with a professor, which is not often. We have some awesome professors here, um, but sometimes it's just not a good fit. And we won't hear from them until the semester's over. And then it's really, really hard to help them. And so it's really important. We, we tell them during the intake, if you're struggling at all, um, and sometimes it's not even specific to the course, but their condition is worsening um, or they have a new emerging condition. So, um, you know, maybe during the intake, they had uh, ADHD and um, a learning disability, but then um, as is often the case, coming to college, coming to this age, anxiety, they develop anxiety or depression. Um, it's important they tell us because there might be more accommodations that they qualify for so we can support them. Um, so that's, I don't know, I think that's really important and it, it's, it's something that I'm emphasizing even more to students now during intakes because I, I see that this happens and, um, and it's, it's harder to help a student if, if it's after the fact. Um, Mona, I'm going to ask you a very quick question, and then I'm going to wrap up by um, sharing some information about orientation dates with you. Mona, can you talk very quickly about the difference between declining balance and swipes? So your student's meal plan will be comprised of two separate parts. There are meal swipes and there's declining balance. The meal swipes can be used at our all you care to eat dining location. A student can swipe in, they can sit and eat as much as they'd like for as long as they'd like. That's the community dining hall located in the law school building on the first floor. We also have our retail locations like Ram Dining and Schmelzer Dining Hall that I mentioned earlier has a halal concept. At those locations, you can use a meal swipe to let's say get one meal um, as well as a drink and a uh, side of chips or a fruit and that's a meal swipe. The DB is like having uh, gift card money on your student ID. It can be used really anywhere, but typically that can, that's more so used for like smaller food items. So if your student wants to pick up a quick snack, wants to go to Arco Tea, grab a coffee, you can use DB in that way. Over the course of the year, once your meal plan is picked, you can't purchase more meal swipes, but you can always add more DB onto your card. So it's important to know for your student, um, basically what their eating habits are and kind of pick uh, based off how much you think they're, how many meal swipes you think they're gonna use. You can always add DB though over the rest of the semester. Um, so that's never not an option. Good. Yeah, Thank go ahead. No, it would only be the locations that are on campus. Yeah. Um, and Bonmi. Bonmi is um, one of our locations that's outside facing. It is in the law school. You do have to exit the law school and kind of go back in from a different entrance way. But yeah. So yeah, the meal, that's a good question. The meal plan balance will carry over from the fall semester into the spring. At the end of the spring semester, any uh, DB, sorry, not meal plan, DB, um, will be forfeited at the end of the spring semester. The meal swipes going into your fall to spring semester, if you have a mandatory meal plan, meaning anything that's block 225 or above, the meal swipes get forfeited at the end of the fall semester. And then you'd have to repurchase a new meal plan for the spring semester. Yes. Um, yeah, we have Grubhub as a partner for um, on the go ordering on campus and Grubhub will actually show students how much DB they have in their meal plan. They can use meal swipes through Grubhub, they can use meal um, DB and they can use their credit card if they run out of anything also. Um, so Grubhub is a great way for them to know that. We also, at, they go to a register and they just want a printed receipt of what they have remaining for DB, they can do it that way as well. A question over there. So the, please please so, encourage them to be proactive. <laughs> yeah, the question was, you know, do we kind of proactively reach out? And we do, we really do. We, we do our best, we're on social, we try to find them where they are um, to make sure they know about everything that we offer. But yes, if you could please advise them 
check out Handshake, please set up an appointment with a career advisor. We're very friendly. You know, students used to be worried about, I heard this after the fact, that they thought they had to wear a suit to come meet with us. And we said, no, you can wear your pajamas, you know, you got to wear a suit on the interview. But um, we're very approachable. We're very nice people. And we, we really just are here to help them. So even if they have no idea what they want to do, please come see us. That's what we're here to help them with. And it could also be as specific as, you know, I have an interview tomorrow. Can we prep? Hopefully not tomorrow, but we have an interview. Can you help me prep? So it could be as big picture or, or as specific as, as they need. Yeah. And we work in different organizations on campus and different departments invite career services to come in. Like, so the career, the, the, um, the commuter ser services, you know, that I work with, you know, Holly will come in um, and do workshops, you know, for our students or coming into the CSA meetings or working with other departments about that too. Um, but I just want to quickly give you all orientation dates and give you just a very quick thing so we can wrap up and you all can um, meet your children um, too. So orientation, so we will be excited to welcome you back on Sunday, August 29th. Three-day mandatory orientation for your students is the 29th, 30th, and 31st of August. Sunday, the 29th um, is gonna, the, time, the start time is really gonna depend on, on a lot of different factors. Are you a resident or a commuter? If you're a commuter, please um, be on the lookout for information from our, from our office and CSS um, about what time commuter check-in happens. Usually it's gonna be in sort of the late morning um, or right around um, noonish, but most likely it'll be about the late morning. Um, if you are a resident, please, please, please pay attention to uh, the emails from the Office of Residential Life. As Dr. Campbell mentioned a little bit earlier, information on roommates, but most specifically about your move-in time um, will be coming um, in mid-August. One of the things, so orientation oversees the move-in process as well. And one of the things that I can tell you that we really need to ask of you is that you please, 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 please pay attention to what your move-in time is. Um, we firmly believe we've got a, a really good well-oiled machine. Um, and we, we like to share that we're able to um, finish early on a lot of times too. Um, and we've successfully been able to do that and moving in three or 400 students in about four hours. Um, and the best day, way that we can do that is with y'all's help um, too. Um, so please pay attention to your move-in time. If you have any questions, once you get that, um, please reach out to the Office of Residential Life. After all of that is done, usually in the, in the early afternoon around 1.30, um, we have the President's and Dean's welcome address. Dean Campbell will give an address. Uh, Dean Arricchio from FCLC and Dean Rapaccioli from Gabelli. Um, you'll also be hearing again from me um, about that. And of course, um, Father McShane, um, our president, will be welcoming you officially um, to campus. There's open houses and receptions. Some of my colleagues here will be hosting all of that um, as well. We're working with uh, Mission Integration and Planning um, for a special welcome um, about Fordham's Jesuit mission. Um, we usually have a, a big fun reception. And then in the late afternoon around four or five, uh, we'll be respectfully asking parents to depart. So as you're making your uh, travel plans, um, just know that the days that we have um, uh, content or we have uh, programs open to parents usually ends around four or five o'clock. So if you're planning flights for Sunday evening, you know, or going home thinking about that, um, please be aware that that's really kind of what it's going to be. Um, for commuter students, uh, please expect that they'll need to be on campus until about eight o'clock, eight or 8.30 for the mandatory programming um, as well. You know, after uh, the five o'clock uh, point, we really break out into student specific small groups. Um, we'll feed them dinner. There'll, there'll be some different things. We'll residential life. Um, we'll have some mandatory programming. Commuters will have some mandatory programming as well. Um, and then we'll have some optional social programs. Um, Monday is student specific only. So the only parent things that we have to offer um, in the fall in August are is on that Sunday. That's why we're so excited that you all are able to join us today for that. That's student life day content. Again, that's roughly gonna be eight or 9 a.m. Um, to roughly about 8, 8, 8 p.m. Um, with the mandatory programming too. So if you're commuting, please anticipate um, that the content will go on um, for most of the day. We'll have lunches and dinners. There'll be uh, keynote speakers. It's a lot of fun. Keynote speakers talking about diversity, equity, and inclusion, um, things really important things to talk about, um, about what it really means to be a Fordham student. Um, and then we're excited to potentially offer excursions um, into the city. We weren't able to do that, of course, last year, um, and recognizing that many people are coming from outside the New York area to introduce them to, you know, New York is my campus, um, and Fordham is my school, so we'll go to, you know, we've, we're usually doing about a dozen or so of these excursions. Orientation will send out information about that in the next couple of weeks, um, or next three weeks or so. 
um, Tuesday is academic orientation. And that's when your students will be broken up by colleges, you know, too. And so it'll be um, FCLC, you know, or Gabelli and meeting with the academic advisors um, as well on those days um, too. For those of you who are, um, I know we have an, a parent of an FCLC transfer um, too, we'll be doing different things, meeting with Dean Stark Tendrano about that too. So uh, I anticipate that FCLC will be all be together and then there'll be some, some, uh, some splitting out of all of that. And then we'll finish up um, in the late afternoon or so. Um, but please be on the lookout. We'll send out more specific schedule information um, about what that all really looks like. There'll be a bunch of emails that you'll be getting from new student orientation, from residential life, from commuter student services. Um, please encourage your students to be checking um, their Fordham emails on all of this um, as well. And certainly if you have any questions, um, please do not hesitate. We're all so excited um, that you've joined us today and we're even more excited uh, to welcome you back in about five weeks, <laughs> which doesn't even seem possible, right? Um, but I just wanna thank you all for, for joining us today. You all should have received an email by now and if not, you will. And what we'd really love for you to do is please give us your feedback on that too. Um, uh, your evaluation and your feedback about how we're doing and what we can improve upon or what you think went particularly well is really invaluable. And we look at that and we share that with folks in the university and we make our decisions about, um, about how we run these programs according to that. So if there are things that you were like, I really wish we would have had more time with X people, you know, or this was too short or this was too long, or I really like the tours and finally able to see the residence halls, you know, we'd love, to, we'd love to have that feedback. Your students have also received that. So if you didn't receive that, Please ask your students um, to forward that to you. It's the same link. You can do that, um, but it, it's, it's really helpful and we're eternally grateful. Um, but once again, I want to thank my colleagues um, for joining us today. Um, and really on behalf of Fordham, thank you so much for coming today and thank you so much for joining the Fordham family. Just one additional thing, uh, you'll be getting a save the date card soon uh, for the parent uh, family weekend that's going to be the weekend of October the 22nd so put that in your phone family weekend October 22nd hold tight for just one moment please um just because I want to go back to that evaluation that Dan was talking about um I'm going to share my screen right here. Um, so if you can please scan for everyone that's in person, if you can please scan this code right now um, and fill out that evaluation. We're going to have our OLs at the door checking to make sure that you completed it as you exit the room because we really appreciate that feedback. Um, for everyone that is virtual and tuning in, our OLs in our virtual room are going to be dropping a link for that. Um, do not scan this code and fill out this one. You have to fill out a separate one specific for virtual participants. Again, our OLs will be dropping that in the chat. Um, once you finish this evaluation, you are free to go. Show it to our OLs on the way out, your confirmation screen. Um, I'm going to see if I can make that a little bigger. Oh, that's too big. You know what? I'm going to stop playing around with it, actually. Maybe that's the best thing to do. Um, there we go. Um, and otherwise, thank you so much for coming to Fordham. You'll meet your student either outside in McNally or on our plaza, and our OLs will direct you in both directions. So thank you so much for joining us today. <laughs>